The real risk to the U.S. economy isn't necessarily deflation. It isn't necessarily inflation. It's something much more dangerous. But it's something that nobody ever talks about. I'm going to reveal this to you right now in one simple fast step. Step number one, let's go over food, shelter, and energy. The amount being spent on eating has hit a 30-year high. Rents are continuing to rise at the fastest pace in decades. So let's look at a chart going all the way back to 1990. On the left, we go from 9% up to 12%. This is a chart of food costs as a percentage of disposable income for the average American. Now, going back to 1990, you see it was very high, around 11%. And it came down quite dramatically. So we got to 2010, went way down in 2020. But more recently, it's gone all the way back up to the all-time highs that we saw in 1990. And this isn't like the stock market where that would be a good thing. This is a bad thing. Because what that means is that Americans are having to spend more and more of their income just on the basics. So we're going to be talking a lot about food, but we also have to remember that shelter costs have increased dramatically as well. Now, there is some good news. Energy costs overall have come down slightly over the last year. Gas prices are down. Natural gas prices are down. But electricity is up. And of course, this is what the government wants you using more and more and more of as far as a source of energy but we'll save that for a completely separate video. So what we have to realize is the gammon basic ratio <laughs> is really what we need to focus on. And if that's going down, then that's a good thing because that means the basic, the necessities that you have to buy every single month are occupying a lower percentage of your overall income. So if this is going up, then that's a bad thing. Let me show you a visual so we're all on the same page. So the black shaded area, energy, blue, shelter, red, food, green, disposable income. We start off, let's just say in 2019, where we had quite a bit of disposable income. Maybe not as much as people would like, but we had more disposable income than we have today. But what happened is shelter costs, blue, and food costs, increased dramatically, even if energy has stayed the same. And people's incomes aren't going up at the same rate as shelter and food, let's say. So that money has to come from somewhere. It comes from disposable income. And I want to highlight the fact that even if food prices haven't gone up that much, which they absolutely have, but let's just assume for a moment that they hadn't and that shelter was the main increase that drove down disposable income. And therefore, we would still see a chart similar to this because we have less income, even if the food prices didn't increase, the food would be a bigger percentage of this lower overall number. But I think most of you watching this video right now, just if you analyze or take a look at what has happened in your life, in the real world, you would say it's probably a combination of both. Food prices definitely have gone up, but so has pretty much everything else. <laughs> and therefore, the disposable income has come down to an even greater degree. To understand just how bad this problem is getting, editor, let's cut right to the internet. We go straight over to the Wall Street Journal title of this article. It's been 30 years since food ate up this much of your income. Ongoing high costs lead food manufacturers and restaurants to keep prices elevated. It's not that they're just keeping prices elevated, but prices are going higher and higher and higher. And if your wages aren't going higher and higher and higher, your disposable income goes lower and lower and lower to a point where it's zero. More on that when we go back to the whiteboard. But going down this article, it says eating continues to cost more. 
even as overall inflation has eased from the blistering pace consumers endured throughout March of 2022 and 2023. Prices at restaurants and other eateries were up 5.1% last month compared with January 2023. So year over year, up 5.1%. And I think that's dramatically understating it. And here we have a quote from the chief executive of snack giant, Kelanova. His last name is completely impossible to pronounce. (laughs) I'm convinced of that. So we're just going to call him Steve. (laughs) Steve says, if you look historically after periods of inflation, there's really no period you could point to where food prices go back down. So even if prices aren't continuing to go up, which I think everyone watching this video would say they absolutely are continuing to go up, but let's assume for a moment that they flatline. It's not like they go down to the levels that we had in 2019. In fact, there's a high probability that food prices never go back down to where they were even last month or where they were in 2022. And therefore, the only way for your disposable income to go back to where it was in 2019 is for your wages to increase at a faster pace. But getting back to the article, in 1991, U.S. consumers spent 11.4% of their disposable personal income on food. This is according to the U.S. Agricultural Department. Food inflation is something that President Biden has been talking about lately. It went so far as to go on Instagram during the Super Bowl and blast food makers that he said were providing less bang for the buck. He talked about shrinkflation. He said the American public is tired of being played for suckers. I've had enough of what they call shrinkflation. It's a ripoff. And ironically enough, Joe Biden is sitting here condemning these greedy capitalists for the shrinkflation. And I totally, look, there's no doubt that it's a ripoff. But if they would not have put less stuff in the same size bag, they would have had to increase prices even more. And therefore, that would have made Joe Biden look even worse. (laughs) So the irony here is he's sitting here condemning the people that bailed him out. And then the Wall Street Journal goes into a lot of these anecdotal stories that I think a lot of you can probably relate to. This gal, Lisa Wister, said her food bills are rising faster than her family's income, leading them to make their own granola from scratch and pack their own snacks for movies. Everything is a negotiation, an analysis about our budget. He says it's exhausting. And here they talk about an ad campaign that was launched in 2022 that just shows you exactly how bad it's gotten in the United States for the average Joe and Jane. They say this ad campaign encouraged consumers to eat cereal for dinner, pitching it as an easy, inexpensive alternative that combined with milk and fruit costs less than $1 per serving. The quote in the campaign was, give chicken the night off. So right now, in the richest country in the whole entire world, the land of the free and the home of the brave, we've got people that are having to eat cornflakes for every single meal just to make ends meet. While at the same time, if you listen to the mainstream media, they'll tell you how the economy is booming. It's doing extremely well. Just because you have to eat cornflakes for dinner and you can't afford to put a roof over your head, it doesn't mean that the economy isn't running on all eight cylinders. And this just further proves that these political elite and the mainstream media, which are basically tied at the hip, have no idea of the realities the average American faces on a day-to-day basis. Now that we understand the dynamics at play, let's go ahead and take this to its logical conclusion. We go right back to a chart that I just drew, and I know this looks a little complicated, but don't worry about it. It's actually very straightforward. And oh yes, by the way, I changed the Gammon Basics ratio to the Gammon Basics percentage. I thought this was far more descriptive, and it sounds like GDP. You get it? G B P G D P. Ah, that's one of my geeky macro jokes. And and oh yes, by the way, when I'm doing these whiteboard videos, I have to keep myself entertained some way. 
But getting back to this chart, we start at 2020, goes all the way into the future, 2030. On the left, we go from 50,000 to 100,000. This amount represents income and basic costs. The basic costs would be food, shelter, energy. Now on the right, we go from zero up to 25,000. And this is to, since it's blue here, matches up with the other spending, also in blue, you'll notice. Okay, so back in 2020, let's assume that incomes for the average American, right around 75,000. And again, to be clear, there's just a hypothetical, just so you understand the concept. Well, we'll assume basics were 50,000. But we know that incomes have increased, but basic costs have gone up at a much faster pace. Now, at a certain point, let's just say in 2025, we'll get to a level where the GBP, Gammon Basics Percentage, is at 100%. In other words, 100% of your income is going to pay food, shelter, and energy. Well, by definition, if all of your money is going to that, you have zero money to spend anywhere else. So as this red line goes up, the blue line goes down to a point where it's literally at zero. So what happens to all these mega corporations like Home Depot, Walmart, Target, and all the small and mid-sized businesses that offer a different type of good or just a service in general? Well, they start to go bust. This increases the unemployment rate and incomes start to go down. And that's what we see right here where this green line starts to head back down to $50,000 even in nominal terms. Now you remember what the Wall Street Journal experts said about food. These prices are very sticky. So it's unlikely that they come down, the most likely flat line. But the good news is shelter and energy in this environment would likely come down slightly. But the bad news is the delta is even more extreme between your basic costs and how much money you're making every single month. But let's look at this through the lens of the CPI. From 2020 to let's just say 2026 or so, we had consumer price inflation, but then we start to have consumer price deflation. But the dynamic as far as what really matters, and that's the individual American's purchasing power, is the exact same regardless. You see, their disposable income or their purchasing power is going down here to a point where it gets to zero, and now it actually goes negative to where their expenses, their basic expenses, are more than 100% of what they're making. Here, let's just say they're 150% relative to their monthly paycheck. You see, what's so ironic is this consumer price inflation that we've had, if we continue to have it into the future, it could bring on a massive wave of consumer price deflation or a Great Depression like we had in the 1930s. So it takes us straight back to what I said at the beginning of this video. The real risk for the US economy isn't necessarily inflation or deflation. It's really GBP, the Gammon Basics Percentage. Because regardless of whether prices are going up or down, if the Gammon Basics percentage is increasing, that means the standard of living for the average American is going down. And this, in my humble opinion, is what we should be focused on even more than if prices are going to go up or are they going to go down. Now, I know a lot of you right about now are saying, George, oh, this is just complete nonsense. I understand what you're saying, but if this were to ever happen, the Federal Reserve would come in and do quantitative easing, or the government would come in and do all these stimmy checks, and yeah, you're probably right. But what we're doing in this video is we're going over the fundamentals of the economy. So we can have consumer price inflation that's created by the US government, absolutely. But this is in an environment where the economy itself, the fundamental, the structure, of the economy is actually very deflationary. So then you say to yourself, okay, George, well then what's the big deal? This, we've seen why this is such a big deal play out right in front of our own eyes in the last two or three years. 
Let's just assume the government, the central planners, the authoritarians come to the rescue and do whatever it is they do. Okay, great. That doesn't change this dynamic because if they continue to increase prices through their economic distortions, the free market isn't going to be able to keep up as far as income and wages. So sure, this may happen further out into the future, but eventually you get to 100% of GBP, and then it goes to 110% and 120%, and then you have these deflationary pressures kick in, which for the average American just makes the problem even worse. But I want to point out, the bigger the crisis, the bigger the opportunity. So you've got a few different options. Number one, you can sit back and just pretend none of this exists and just bury your head in the sand like an ostrich. Probably not a good game plan. Or you could say, you know what? I realize that there are some risks in the system, but if anything happens, it's not going to be a problem because the government is there to protect me. So I have full faith and confidence in Joe Biden's abilities. So I'm going to go ahead and take my family's future and put it in his hands. Again, probably not a good option. Or the other option is to take control of your own destiny. Be proactive. Take action right now to be prepared. So whatever happens in 2024 and 2025, you'll not only survive, but you'll hopefully even thrive. So now you're probably asking yourself, okay, George, how do I do that? I think one of the best ways is to come to the conference that I have set up specifically to help you solve these problems. It's Rebel Capitalist Live. It's this May 31st through June 2nd in Orlando. I've got some of the best experts and speakers in the business that are going to show you what they're doing with their own portfolios and what they're doing in their own lives to make sure that they're taking advantage of this potential economic tsunami that is coming our way. Additionally, we'll not only be showing you how to protect and build your wealth, but probably more importantly, showing you how to increase your levels of freedom and personal liberty. Because at the end of the day, that is far more important than what's in your portfolio. The bottom line is Rebel Capitalist Live was created to help you build the future you want for yourself and your family. You can check it out at rebelcapitalslive.com.